A few months ago, Lee Anderton invited me to Guildford to the Anderton shop for a private tour. And when the captain invites you himself, of course, you say yes. Whilst I was there, we filmed a bunch of stuff and we intended to put it all in one video this video. However, it was so long that I thought I'd split it up into at least two parts. So here's part one of me visiting Anderton's in Guildford. Enjoy! I've just got to Guildford in the UK. I'm at Anderton's, as you can see, and I'm going to go in and meet the captain himself. He's going to take me on a store tour. Look who it is! Hello, mate. How are you? Very well, thanks. Excellent stuff. Let's get in there. There we are. Thank you for having me surprise. here. surprise. No, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. So, um, is this where we pretend that this is completely... Uh, this is complete. I've never met you before <laughs> and we definitely didn't drink at least three coffees this morning. <laughs> Look, I, uh, we, I haven't shown you the store yet. Right? No, you haven't. So, I have had a little nosy, so this is not my... Let me... In uh, fact, I've been here in 2009. Did you? Pre-YouTube. Pre I would... MySpace time. I would argue without that purchase at Anderton's, which we'll talk about later, Really? I wouldn't be here right now. Cool. This is where people, I know people see me in camera, so they go, I didn't realize Lee was as tall as he was. I'm actually, I'm like, there, I'm, not, there. I'm like, now, now I'm, I'm on the one leg. He's like gigantic. Well, look, let's show you, this is our store. So my family, uh, my grandfather and father started a small music store in Guildford in 1964. Uh, we moved to this premises around about the time I started in the, uh, in 1991. I've been here for about a year by then. Uh, and we've expanded on it a bit over time and refurbished it a few times. But uh, yes, we, as you come in, you see a nice array of acoustic guitars. And um, typically what's here is where you might want to pick up an acoustic guitar, sort of sub seven or eight hundred pounds. Maybe it's your first one or your, or your second or third one. Um, we then go into somewhere where you might by uh, one of your first electric guitars and we're going to talk a little bit more about the east coast with andy i know he's interested in that i really am then we have a beautiful display of victory amplifiers because um, <laughs> and then we have lots more guitar amplifiers and this is something that uh, anderton's has always been well known for we obviously want people to come to the store and feel like they've got an environment they can try stuff that isn't you know, embarrassing and in front of everybody else. So we've got four of these little soundproof rooms with a mirror and a hashtag. So you can kind of literally just hashtag yourself, you know, f f photograph yourself in a little room playing your guitar of your dreams and post it on social. We've got room of bass guitars. Uh, do you have many bass guitar followers on your channel? They're increasing. No. I don't know what's oh, happening, right. but bassists are coming. Hello, bass players. <laughs> Hi. Then we have some more guitars that are perhaps a bit more contemporary, including a good display of Chapman guitars and some of the other. Hello, thank you very much. It's very well Hello modeled. Um, then let's go back this way. This is, a, this is an old, this, this would have originally been, in fact, here would have been the original uh, rear wall. It's a, a very nice house in Guildford. Right. Uh, hence the reason it sort of feels a bit like an old rabbit warren. Um, I was going to say Actually, homely. I tell a lie. This homely is, was the word. This, this was ah. the old wall. So it, that, this would have been the. the so that, that's where I came in, just yeah. over there. So we've got a basement. We've got some offices upstairs as well. Uh, and then everything you're in now are extensions that we've built on over the years. So we've got lots of lovely guitars. But one of the things that we did during COVID was I, I realized that actually mo whenever we get busy, you know, Saturdays and Sundays and stuff like that, it's a bit chaotic in here. And I was very conscious that if you were coming in to spend three or 400 pounds on a guitar, it was okay, that chaos and you could jump in a room and stuff like that and make a decision. But if you were coming in to spend two or 3,000 pounds on a guitar or, or more, it wasn't the best environment when we were super, super busy. Sure. So um, we decided to sell keyboards instead. No, so ah. I, uh, we built this extension, which uh, is a, we can fairly easily close off if it kind of gets busy or you can book an appointment to come out here. This we've called our guitar gallery. Oh, Lee, the smell is smell. wonderful. And so typically the guitars out here will be all of the, um, more premium products we've got. So we've got an acoustic area with um, Martin and Taylor and Loudon guitars that are all 
the, the sort of starting price in this area is going to be sort of two, two and a half thousand pounds. It's going to mm -hmm. go up to, we'll have some, you know, 10, 15,000 pound PRSs and, or whatever. It could be you know, limited edition stuff, really cool, unusual used gear. So this is joyous. You know, this is clearly as a guitar player, this is the destination you want to sort of come and hang out in. Another soundproof room. This one here might be a bit over the top, this one. This we went full double doored soundproof. Oh, so yeah, if you, if you really, really want to come in and be ludicrously loud uh, and no one hear what you're playing. This was more actually so that um, it, it didn't affect people who were browsing rather than sure. um, wanting people to be insanely loud. So this is nice. Um, of course, what a lot of people don't realize now is they see the store and they go, that's a cool looking store. This is only about 10% of our operation in terms of turnover and size and staff. Uh, we're not going there today. Uh, who wants to see the inside of a warehouse anyway? Uh, but yeah, we've got about 60,000 square feet of warehousing on an industrial estate just outside of Guildford. And that's where all of our um, online uh, business is done. Uh, I think it was important for to keep, it was important to keep all of the key senior staff or most of the senior staff though in this operation, in this building, because uh, although as a percentage of our turnover, uh, the store is um, a relatively small percentage now, it's still the sort of beating heart of the business. And it's, it's what we're trying to emulate online, you know, whether it's through YouTube or the experience that you have on the site. We're trying somehow to capture that magic that always happens in a great music store where you sort of feel, you know, there's buzz going on and you're talking to other musicians and all that kind of stuff. So we're, we're sort of, I always, want everyone who works at Anderton's to really understand that this is the beating heart of the operation, even though there's a big, you know, body all around it. Anyway, look, got funny things with black and white keys on them out here. Um, you know what's cool as well is in the last five or six years, keyboard players have, have gone as mental for analog gear as guitar players go. So the, the, the boom, if you like, in keyboard sales over the last two or three years has been going back to all the stuff they used to make in the 70s um, and not trying to digitally recreate it, you know, actually make it how they used to, um, which is nuts, right? But kind of cool. It's like the vinyl thing, you know, people just eventually you just go, digital's great and it's convenient and it's cheap, but you can't ever replace the full sort of organic spectrum of analog things. He says controversially, as millions of digital users argue oh that dear. you can't tell the difference. Uh, and there we are, and we've done our little circle and we're kind of back. So, Mr. Andy. Yes, hang on, let's, let's turn that around so we can see ourselves. What would one like to delve into a little bit more? Well, of course this is off the cuff and not pre-planned, but I would love to take a look at those East Coast guitars. Yeah, yeah that's, that's... That's your in-house brand. Yeah, it's an interesting story. Well, interesting. It's a story. <laughs> it, it is there's a, a story. There's some method to, you know, there's a reason why we decided to do that. Sure. So I can talk to you about that. Well, I'm actually here to pick up a guitar that mm. I'm almost certainly buying. So we'll go into that in another video. Stranger. Yeah, things st stranger have happened. happened. I also saw your second hand section. Yeah, There's yeah. A, a Les Paul Junior or something uh -huh. in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A single yeah, P90. That, yeah. mm -hmm. If I wasn't that coming nice? for that, that other guitar, I would take a look at that. But I'll take a look at that later. Let's take some East Coast stuff to the studio and go there now. Lee? Oh, damn these clicks. I've ended up back in the studio. Um, okay, well, I'll find somehow I'll click back and and well you can click that video down there and you'll see the part that you should have seen instead of this bit and if it's not there yet for some reason you can click there and subscribe to the channel and then when that is there you can watch it so um yeah sorry about that uh I guess I'll see you in part two bye bye